Much like the video earlier on the Holy Roman Empire, we'll now take a look at the Rus. First, what we have in the background is the clip of the Rise of Moscow campaign from the Gamescom trailer. And then getting straight into the other information, we have some background on the Rus. They are highly skilled hunters adept in the wild. Supported by their battle-ready cavalry, the Rus grow more powerful as they expand to new frontiers through the ages. In Age of Empires 4, the Rus civilization tells a story of a fledgling empire caught between powerful opponents over the years 882 to 1552 CE. Hardened by devastating invasions, political instability and bitter winters, the Rus were built for survival, masters of hunting, trade and wooden construction. They would rebuild their realm as their leaders fought to birth the new empire under Moscow. Age of Empires 4 allows you to experience the Rus civilization through four ages, portraying distinct moments in history. In Age 1, the traditional Slavic with Norman and Norse influences. In Age 2, the Rus Golden Age with the Byzantine influence. Age 3, the fall of the Mongol influence. And in Age 4, the rise of the Muscov Duchy. And then on to playing the Rus. As skilled hunters, playing the Rus means a wilderness is yours to command. They reap the key benefits from their surroundings, particularly in gathering resources to build up a strong economy quickly. Enemies facing the Rus will find it difficult to disrupt their growth. They gain a steady income of gold from the hunting cavern, which acts as a standard mill, and the unique bounty score when killing Gaia animals. With the bounty system, players earn gold when killing any animal on the map. This contributes to the player's bounty total. As it increases, food harvest and hunting cabin's gold rate also increase. The Rus's powerful early game defensive capabilities make them a commendable foe in early ages. They have stronger palisades in place of early access to walls, access to knights starting in age 2, and wooden fortresses, improved outposts with other unique technologies. Their unique influence provides them with more wood when lumber camps are built near wooden fortresses. Battle-wise, the Rus are known for their mounted warrior monk that can buff surrounding units and the Strelsi a powerful gunpowder unit. The Rus civilization's unique attributes provide a lively challenge to those eager to leverage its advantages. And as always, we are shown some unique units for the Rus. First is the warrior monk, a military-minded support unit that improves combat capabilities of nearby units after it attacks. They can pick up relics, convert enemy units, and capture sacred sites. So basically, this is their version of the monk, but I assume can move a bit faster because they're on a donkey? A little reminiscent of the Age of Empires 2 unit, the missionary from the Spanish civilization. And then we have the horse archer. The horse archer is a unique ranged cavalry unit available in the castle age. They are highly mobile and effective against slower melee units. Unique to the Rus it may be, but it's certainly not the only horse archer type unit in the game. Anyhow, finally we have the Strelsi, a high damage light gunpowder infantry unit with a strong rate of fire when stationary. They employ huge axes, which are potent against melee attackers. Now on to the Rus through the ages. The Rus have access to the hunting cabin in age 1. This is an improved version of the mill that generates gold based on the number of nearby trees. This unique structure to the Rus can also produce scouts. And again we get a unique technology here. The castle turret increases the damage of arrows fired from wooden fortresses, which is the unique version of the outpost for the Rus. And then on to age 2, the landmark the Golden Gate is one of two landmarks bringing the Rus into the second age. It allows the Rus to further grow their economy, the landmark acts as a trade building with resources traded here at more favourable rates compared to the regular market. Rather than a unique technology, we're getting told about a unique unit here, which for some reason doesn't appear above. These are the Lodger Trade Ship and the Lodger Attack Ship. The Lodger ships can be converted to any other type of ship, which is quite an interesting prospect. And then on to Age 3, the Russ's capabilities with their warrior monks are increased with the Abbey of the Trinity one of the landmarks bringing the Rus into the Third Age. This landmark acts as a monastery, producing warrior monks at a reduced cost and houses unique upgrades for these units. And as noted here, one of those unique technologies is the Blessing Duration, which increases the duration of the warrior monk's Saint Blessing ability. Though at this stage, we don't really have any idea what that does. 
And then finally on to age 4. One of the landmarks bringing the Rus into the final age is the High Armory, which offers additional upgrades for siege units and a reduced cost to produce nearby siege workshops. I assume what they mean there is to produce units at nearby siege workshops. And also we get another unique technology from this building, the Siege Crew Training, which allows for instant setup and teardown of trebuchets and mangonels. Finally, we have the tiniest bit of information, as always, about the Rise of Moscow campaign. The story of Moscow's rise begins at the humble outpost on the Moskov River and ends with the emergence of a new superpower. Playing as the Rus and their iconic leaders, players will battle the relentless brutality of the Mongol invasion, unite allies and foes, and force a change of fortune, from subjugation to independence. And that is everything we have so far on the Rus. As always, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date on the latest information for Age 4, including the upcoming open beta which will hopefully be announced fairly soon. Thanks again for watching and have a great weekend.